Well, greetings, and here we are for a Discipleship Empowerment Sunday evening service. And we're just glad that we can join with you, and hopefully that as you give some time, that the Word of God may encourage you and strengthen you tonight as we look into it. As you know, we've been studying through the book of Galatians, and Galatians has been really heavily focused on the importance of the gospel. I cannot overemphasize the importance of the gospel. The gospel is where we should be focusing. It's where we should be, as you say, the hub of the wheel. And everything else has to fit around it. You know, when we just talked about Easter just a few weeks ago and how Easter is kind of the hub of the gospel when it comes to the death and resurrection. And everything from the Hebrew scriptures points towards that. And everything after the the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ leads along on a journey with that in mind. So the gospel is to be good news. And the thing is, we need to remember it is good news. It's there to encourage us, to strengthen us, to build us up and to help us. And, and so Paul was struggling with the Galatian church. The reason he was struggling with it is because he'd wondered what happened with them and the gospel. It seemed like some of them had strayed away. Some of them were, as in Paul's words, were even bewitched in following and after another gospel, which is not really a gospel at all. There is only one gospel, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, as he's been taking the church of Galatia on a journey, he's also taking us on a journey and trying to show us the importance of the gospel. And tonight, when we look into it, we've titled tonight's many message, The Goal of the Gospel. Paul is trying to say the gospel has a goal to it. Or to put it another way, there is a target. There is a purpose for the gospel that we should be striving towards. And that's what Paul was trying to get the Galatian church to remind them again, keep focused on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't get me turned to the left or to the right or swayed one way or another by different teachings, but get focused on the gospel and stick there. And the gospel, there is a goal to the gospel. And that's what we're going to study tonight when we go into Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 26. We're going to see that I think that Paul lays out the goal of the gospel. But before we get into there, there is a lot of words that I think are important that before we read the scriptures, that would help us to reflect, reflect on something. Because when we look at the goal of the gospel, we're going to see how we're to walk in it, how we're not to be uh, lust after the things of this world, that it is important that we practice the gospel in our lives, to realize that because of the gospel, we have an inheritance also, because of the gospel, the Holy Spirit wants to fill us and wants us to have the fruit of the Spirit, and that there's a battle when it comes to this area of flesh, and that we need to watch out for our passion. Are we passionate for the Lord Jesus Christ? Are we passionate for the things of this world? So these are some of the words that we're going to, that when we read the scriptures, is going to challenge us. How are we walking? What kinds of things are we desiring or lusting after? What are we practicing in our lives? What do we hope to inherit in our journey here on earth? What kind of fruit is coming from our life? And, of course of all, how are we dealing with the whole area of the flesh? And what kind of passion are we following after when it comes to Christ? So these are the words that we are seeing here. But again, the most important part is, is that the goal of the gospel, and I'm going to say this very quietly, strongly, <laughs> uh, in our face, maybe if I want to put it that way. The goal of the gospel is that we get walking in the spirit of Jesus Christ, in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We've been alluded to it a number of times over as we've been on the journey on this whole area of the gospel as we worked our way through Galatians chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now Paul, as he's bringing it into the focus, the goal into focus, we're going to see how much he talks about now the work of the Holy Spirit. 
It's because of the gospel and it's part of the gospel that the Holy Spirit comes to empower us, to teach us, to comfort us, to guide us, to help us in our journey. And Paul wants to know us to know that. And he wants us to know it in such a way that without the Holy Spirit, we cannot overcome the things of the flesh. Many people have tried. I've seen it over my 50 years of ministry where people have tried to do different things to overcome the fleshly problems that they have. They've tried to abstain. They've tried to, uh, oh, I, I can say, just create all kinds of habits that haven't worked. And to realize that the only way we can overcome the things that we struggle with is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so today, as we begin to read this scripture, we have to ask the question, what is our goal? What is our goal? Is our goal the gospel? Because if our goal is the gospel, then Paul makes clear in verse 25 that we then should live by the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. That's the goal of the gospel. Not to walk according to the law, not to walk according to the flesh, but to walk according to the Spirit of God. Amen? And that's what we need to get back to. You know, off and on throughout history, there's been tremendous movements of the Spirit of God upon the people of God. But it seems like after a period of time, things grow old, people change their minds and go on another direction. The only way that we're going to be able to overcome the things that we're facing and the things that are challenging around the world is by walking in the Spirit of the God. And walking in the Spirit as of the Holy Spirit as He directs us and guides us and should point us towards our goal of sticking to the gospel. So let's read the scriptures now tonight. And now there is a lot of interesting things that are going on here. And and again, you have to kind of see that that Paul is saying, Okay, here's one side, here's the other side, here's one side, and here's one side. He's giving various arguments to the Galatian church concerning how they should walk in the Spirit. Okay? So keep that in the back of our mind, plus the words that we've read already, and see what it says to us. And let's, you know, we need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, speak to us on how we should be walking in this day and age, in this season of life. How should we be walking? And so when he starts off in verse 16 of chapter 5 of Galatians, he says, I say then, and here he says right up front, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, self-ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I have told you in the times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, here's our now other side. But, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, self-control, and against such there is no law. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the passions and desires. Verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. So Paul was saying, you know, if you're going to be able to deal with the things that are going on in the Galatian church, the only way it's going to be happen is that you walk in the Spirit. That's got to be your focus 
and your goal. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to look into your word. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would use it to guide us and direct us as a as fellow disciples of your of yours. And Lord, not only that, for those who may not be a disciple of yours or a follower of you, Jesus, that it may help them to understand why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be able to walk in the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, I just want to place our time in your hands and ask that you would guide and direct us now. In your precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to have an interesting time tonight because there's a lot of words and a lot of things that are being said. Now, we're not going to be able to get into it in full detail. But hopefully you will go back and study study these scriptures afterwards and say, Okay, Lord, speak to me more about what these words all mean. Because there's a number of things that we don't normally pay much attention to or understand in our vocabulary. Because they're not used very often in our languages. But the first main point that Paul wants to begin to talk to the Galatian church after he's talking to them about how love fulfills the law, and after he talks about, about Christian liberty in chapter, chapter the early parts of chapter 5, now he's saying, okay, now that you understand that, and see, again, what has been happening to the Galatian church is that they keep slipping back into law righteousness. And Paul keeps trying to bring them out into grace righteousness. And the only way you can have grace righteousness is to, by what he's going to say now, Almost like, therefore, walk in the Spirit. If you want to be an overcomer of the law and an overcomer of the things in the flesh, we need to walk in the Spirit. So our first point where he challenges us, he says to us, walk in the Spirit. That's the only way that we're going to overcome temptation is by not walking in the flesh, but by walking in the Spirit. You know, our flesh lusts after all kinds of things. Look what Paul says. He says, I say to you, walk in the spirit and you know shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, the gospel is trying to highlight that it has come to set the captive free. Remember, Jesus, remember Paul says in earlier that part of this chapter, he says I came, that the gospel came to bring us liberty and freedom. But the liberty and freedom can only take place by the empowering of the Holy Spirit upon one life because why the natural man wants to walk in a what you can sort of say in the law and also wants to walk according to the flesh i don't know about you but that's what it's all about sometimes people just want to keep walking after their own desires after their own flesh after their own feelings and everything else like that but paul is saying no there's something more outside of that outside of the law, and outside of the things of the flesh. We may find that hard to believe, but that is true. I've experienced that. There is something more that, that I can have that's out of what my flesh wants and out of what you could sort of say the laws or the rules and regulations try to dictate to us. There's something more, and that more is walking in the Spirit. He goes on in verses 17 to 18, not only does he talk about how we need to walk in the Spirit, but secondly, he goes on and gives us more insight concerning about the flesh. It says, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit. So now what he's saying, when it comes to this whole idea of flesh and Spirit, they're at war with each other. The things of this world don't want to get along with the things of God. Satan and his army, when he was thrown out of heaven and now is a prince of this air and the demons and all that, they are at war with the things of God. And the th things of this world, the things of the flesh, often want to oppose the things of God. Our flesh is very strong. Our fleshly desires are very powerful. And Paul was gonna, wants to try to say but the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit is more powerful. And you're able to overcome, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the desires of the flesh. That's why he tells us here, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And they are contrary to one another. They're at opposite ends of one another. There is no agreement. 
Is now think about that that our fleshly desires are contrary to our spiritual walk that we should have in Christ Jesus. He's saying that's what's there. That's what is opposing us. And we need to learn how to walk in the Spirit. And so he goes on, so that you do not do the things that you wish. So often, you know, you know, like we know we need to walk in the Spirit, but so often because the flesh is so strong, we walk in the things of the flesh. Do you know what I'm saying? I know I've struggled with that in my own life off and on over the years. The flesh can be become very powerful. The desires of the flesh. Now, I'm not saying that they're all sinful, but a lot of them can be. Because why? Because they become like an idol before us where we worship them and love them. And what that does is take away us from God, from the presence of God. I know a lot of fleshly things that you could easily say are not sinful, but how often they have taken us away from the presence of God. How often they have taken us away or divided us from being with God. And I could list a whole pile of them. I mean, Paul's going to list a whole bunch of them. But I can say there's a whole bunch of them even today that that are fleshly desires, which are powerful, and take us away from what God wants to do in our lives. And there's many of them. But Paul was saying, the true gospel is one that where we walk in the spirit and not walk in the flesh. So that you do not do the things that you wish, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So Paul, again, in the book of Galatians, he's going after two things. Well, actually many more, but let's say his focus, his goal is the gospel. And those two of things that oppose the gospel is one is the flesh and the other one is the law. And when he talks about the law, he talks about the law that was given to the people of Israel in the Old Testament, that they were to follow, they were to live by, they were to walk under, and still many to this present day still do that. Everything from circumcision to how they should eat food and how they should not mix food, the type of clothing, whether they should work or not work, all those things are still happening today. I've been over in Israel, I think three or four times now, and I've seen all this in action. And unfortunately, that the, when you walk according to the law, you get under the bondage of the law and there's no freedom. Now, the gospel gives parameters that we need to live by when it comes to Jesus Christ. But in a the sense, they're not laws, but they're directives of how Christ wants us to live in an abundant and powerful life in him. And so we, we see this, we said now not only does Paul say in verse, six, verse 16 that we should walk in the Spirit, but now he's saying in verse 18, but you need to be led by the Spirit and not under the law. So he's talking again to the, the Hebrew people. He's trying to say, first of all, in general, he's speaking to the whole church, walk in the Spirit. But then he's focusing on those who are finding themselves getting sidetracked back into the law is saying what you need to do is not to be led by the law but you need to be led by the spirit see we're no longer under the old covenant jesus fulfilled it he didn't destroy it he fulfilled it and he gave us a new covenant and the new covenant was to walk in god and to walk in him to love god with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself those were the two greatest commandments but in the midst of that he wanted us to be led by the Spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're going to have a goal of walking in the Spirit, and you're going to have a goal of being led by the Spirit, that means you need to become sensitive to the Spirit about what the Spirit is trying to say. Because the Holy Spirit can... Let me ask this question. Can the Holy Spirit lead us? And the answer is, yes, He can. But that takes time... And why do you mean by it takes time? Because you need to get into the Word, let the Word get into you, so you have an understanding of what the Word is all about. And second of all, you need to start, spend time in prayer. Those two things are the foundational directives that the Holy Spirit uses to guide us and to lead us. See, 
God doesn't want us just walking aimlessly all over the place. He wants us to walk in the Spirit, but to be able to walk in the Spirit, we need to allow Him to lead us. Wherever you lead me, I will follow. I will go. And sometimes we say, no, 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 no. And that shouldn't be. Because if we're going to be led by the Spirit, we must say, yes, Lord, here am I, use me, lead me, and wherever you will lead me, I will follow. And disciples down throughout history do not like to be led by the Spirit because often they are in conflict with the flesh. The flesh wants to lead this way, and the Spirit often leads that way. That's why we always say, that, that when you're going down the road, there is a fork in the road. There's the things concerning the world, and there's the things that are concerning the kingdom of heaven. And we have to choose. The Old Testament challenges us over and over again. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Make a choice. Because if you make a proper choice and walk in the Spirit, and say, I'm going to desire, I'm going to trust today that as I walk in the Spirit, He will lead me. And I want to tell you the truth that I've experienced. And some of you know it, and I'm glad that you're listening tonight. Because I believe the only way to overcome the things that are going on in the world around us, that are happening in the day and age that we are facing, is that we be led by the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I'm saying? That might be old-fashioned teaching. That might be old-fashioned thinking, but that is the only way. That's what the goal of the gospel is, is to get, Paul is trying to say, is the goal of the gospel is to get us back to walking in the Spirit and to being led by the Spirit. Because he's going to show as we move in verse 17 and 18 that this, this whole thing of the flesh is a battleground. Then as he goes on and he says, if he, and if you don't understand what walking in the flesh is, he's going to give us a whole bunch of descriptive words, just in case you don't understand what it means to walk in the flesh. You know, a lot of people like to walk, as I say, concerning the law, and they almost use a set of balance scales. They have all the laws over here on one side, and there they are on the other side. And that they can fulfill more laws, more laws, more laws. Then they can get some type of happy medium, and they should be okay, they think. Get into heaven by the skin of their teeth. But that's not what it's all about. That's what the Hebrews thought, but that's not what Jesus preached. He's saying, I want you to get rid of all that. And I just want you to focus and have a goal of walking in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit. But just in case you don't know what that is, I'm going to give you, he says, some framework, some uh, words that are going to tell you what it is. And so what is walking in the flesh? Well, we're finding that in verse 19 to 21. He gives us a whole list of the fruit of the flesh. Now, it's important that we get this because this is the fruit of the flesh. Why? Because after these verses, we have the fruit of the Spirit. So Paul is saying to the Galatian church, your goal of the gospel is to walk and be led by the Spirit. But if you're going to continue in the law and you're going to continue in the flesh, this is the kind of fruit you can expect from that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So before we get into the fruit of the Spirit... He's going to give us a list, a small list, of what the fruit of the flesh is. And here he says, the fruit of the flesh is adultery. It's fornication. It's uncleanness. It's lewdness. Again, uh, adultery, sorcery, hatred. You'll hate each other. Contentions. You'll be fighting with one another. And, and jealousies. You'll be getting more jealous of what others have and you don't have. You're going to have outbursts of wrath or outbursts of swearing. I know a lot of Christians that swear. Well, that's the fruit of the world. That's the fruit of the flesh. That's not the fruit of Jesus. I know a lot of believers that get jealous one with another and sometimes even leave churches because of their jealousy towards one. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. That's the fruit of the flesh. Some people have hatred. Oh, people just have hatred 
sometimes. And we're seeing it more and more. I think we've been locked down too long and we've had a chance to think too much. And now we're beginning to get hatred and anger and all those kinds of things. And that's not the fruit of the spirit. That's the fruit of the flesh. You're going to be involved in sorcery, involved in, you know, looking at the stars and involved in reading your palms and involved in all kinds of seances and other types of things. People like to try to read their future in the papers and stuff like that. That's wrong. That's the fruit of the flesh. He goes on, because of these outbursts of wrath, you're going to have selfish ambitions. You're going to do what all you want to do is just for you. Selfish. Selfish ambitions. You're not thinking of those around you. Fruit of the flesh. There's going to be heresies. You know, and dissensions. Fighting in the church. Dissensions. Coming at one another. And and, and I've seen that. I've seen that in board meetings and leadership meetings and in denominational things where there is dissensions and, and, and things that they're going at each other, that is a fruit of the flesh. He says, and then there will be heresies, that you're going to teach things that are not of the Spirit, things that are not of the Holy Spirit. That is a fruit of the flesh. You're going to be full of envy. You're going to be, and matter of fact, you might even get to the place where you'll be murderous, and you'll want to murder you're going to be involved in all kinds of drunkenness and rivalries or pa parties, wild parties. And we say, well, that was something that went on in the times of Paul, but it's still going on today. If you would take that list and put it up today and look at the world, you would say that fruit is doing quite well in the world. Not everybody has it, but it's around. Would you say amen to that? Would you agree that there can be rivalries mm -hmm. and drunkenness and murder and envy envy and heresy and dissensions? Do we see people full of self-ambitions instead of figuring out ways of being a servant to others? Do you see people with jealousies? And contentions and, and hatred and writing things and speaking things and saying things about people. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it even in the last week. Some of these things. It's out there. People do not want to hear that what you need to do is to walk in the spirit and be led of the spirit and put away the things of the flesh and put away the things of the law and walk in the Spirit and be led by God. They don't want that. And let me tell you that in the last days, they're going to want more of this. They're going to want to have the freedom. And Satan is going to be willing to give it to them. The demonic host is willing to give it to them. Whatever they want, he's going to give to them. But that is something of the flesh. Satan and his demonic host wants us to desire every fleshly thing that we can grab a hold of. That's what he wants. But that's not of the Lord. That's not what the gospel is. The gospel is to put us at, at liberty with the things of Christ. To break the cords and the ropes and give us freedom from the flesh. Freedom from the law. Can you say amen to that? That's what it's all about. That's what Paul is writing to the church, to the Galatian church. Hey, Galatian church, quit walking in the law. Quit walking in the flesh. Quit bearing this fruit of the flesh in your life. These things are going on, many of them, in the church. Before the time of Christ, they were going on in the temple. They were going on horrendous things have gone on for thousands of years. Let me tell you, what's going on back then is no different than what's going on today. And it will get worse. If you look at the, how nations have fallen around the world, every nation that has fallen gets into all these things. When the Roman Empire fell, 
it was getting into these kinds of things. When empires around the world begin to crumble and fall, you can give them this checklist and you will say, yep, yeah, that's what they're starting to do. That's what they're getting involved in. That's what they're, they're getting involved in uncleanness and foreign vacation and lewdness. Is lewdness around? Oh, it's all over the place. Idolatry, worshiping false god, sorcery, you know, hatred. I've never seen so much hatred as is on the news nowadays every night. They're contentious. They're, they're angry at one another. Jealous, outbursts of wrath. Self ambition, dissensions, heresy, envy, murders, drunkenness. You know, are we seeing murders all over the place? All over the place. You know, in Myanmar, in 70 days, they've killed, they've murdered 700 people on the streets. That's the flesh. That's the flesh. And so what Paul is trying to say to the Gentile church, that's not who we are. Who we are are people who live according to the gospel and who walk in the spirit and are led in the spirit. And thirdly, who have the fruit of the spirit flowing out of their lives. Did you hear what I just said? Because Paul gives us what the list of the flesh or the fruit of the flesh is. And now we're going to look at in verses 22 to 23. That if you're a walking in the spirit. And then you are being led by the spirit. You will have the fruit of the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit is this. And so Paul saying the goal of the gospel. Is that you would be walk led and filled by the Holy Spirit. And by being filled by the Holy Spirit, you will have this fruit flowing out of you. You're going to have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faithful, uh, long-suffering, self-control. All these things you're going to have. You're going to have in your life. But it means, first of all, and I love it when he says, he lists all these things. And what does he finally said at verse 12? You have gentleness, self-control, and against such, there is no law. Paul was saying, you know, though you, you Gentile church, you're getting caught up in the law. Let me tell you, if you're walking in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit, you will have the fruit of the Spirit. And against that, no law is able to stand. Love, I mean, when you look at these words, and if we were to have time to break down each one of them, this is what God wants to have. And so when we're doing the, uh, the, the things of the world, we're going to get the fruit of the world. And I'm saying that there's too much of the fruit of the world, not only in the world, but as Paul was saying, in the church. And what needs to happen, and we need to get focus and make as our goal, that we walk in the Spirit, that we're led by the Spirit, and that we have the fruit of the Spirit flowing through us. Can you say amen to that? I didn't write it. Paul wrote it. Paul's talking about it. He's saying it's time to have to stop having worldly fruit in the church. Boy, you're saying, Pastor, you're getting pretty narrow-minded over the last little while. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to tell you what the Scriptures are saying. I'm not trying to tell you what I what I say you need to do. That's, that's something you need to do between you and God. But God is saying to us, through the Apostle Paul, to the Galatian church, that if your focus and goal of the God should be the gospel and the focus and goal of the gospel is to walk in the spirit, to be led by the spirit and have the fruit of the spirit. And against such, there is nothing that can stand. No law and no flesh. Did you hear what I just said? That's powerful when you understand it. As I said, I've been in meetings and things around the world where I've seen so much fruit of the flesh but almost no fruit of the Spirit. And I'm talking about church meetings. I'm talking about 
leadership meetings. I'm talking about things where you, you would think that people who walked in the Lord for a long time wouldn't be carrying around with them the fruit of the world, but they would be overpowered with the fruit of the Spirit. We need to get overpowered by the fruit of the Spirit. And to be able to have that, we need to be walking in the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit, as Paul is saying. And to do that, he goes on in 24 and says, Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So Paul is trying to say that if you're gonna, if you have the things of God, you need to crucify your flesh. Or to put it another way, you need to, to die to yourself and live for Christ. Jesus talked about that in John 12, 24, where he said, if the less a grain of wheat fall in the ground and dies, it produces nothing. Or another way to put it, I mean, to make an understanding, as a, as a grain of wheat falls into the ground, it's a kernel. And what it has to happen, we use the word die, but in, in reality, it means to be, to germinate, to break open, to become alive. Otherwise, if that seed is just a seed, it produces nothing. And what Paul was trying to say, that what Jesus Christ and the gospel is trying to do is to plant in our lives in such a way that is now going to produce fruit. Fruit that will bring glory to the Lord. But we need to die to ourselves. We need to put the old self away. We need to put the old laws away. We need to put the old lifestyle away. Jesus, when we receive him as our Lord and Savior, changes us from the inside out. He changes our heart, he changes our thinking, and he changes our actions. Is that true? Is that the gospel truth? Come on now, let's think about it. Because the gospel truth changes us from the inside and out. And how is that possible? It's possible by walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, and also having the fruit of the Spirit flowing through us. Look what he says. He sums it all up to for us now in verses 25. If we didn't get it, he brings us around full circle. And look what he says. He wants us to see this. If you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. What he's trying to get across to the Galatian church. People, it's not the law. People, it's not the flesh. But it's walking in the Spirit. And when you walk in the Spirit, you need to live in the Spirit. You need to be in the Spirit realm. Talking to the Lord and letting the Lord talk to you. Getting into the Word and letting the Word get into you. And when you do that, when you do that, it's interesting that verse 26 says, Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. When you're walking in the Spirit, you will be led by the Spirit. You will have the fruit of the Spirit. And because of that, you will live by the Spirit. And now you will go along with one another in the body of Christ, in the Spirit of Christ. Are you getting it today? Have you seen what Paul is trying to say to the Galatian church? Can I just say it one more time? And then we'll go to prayer. Verse 16, walk in the Spirit. Verse 18, be led by the Spirit. Verse 22, be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Verse 25, live by the Spirit. And in so doing, you're going to have an unbelievable relationship, not only with our Lord Jesus Christ, but with other believers around about you. And that's what the goal of the gospel is. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing and what you want to speak into us. And I know that there would be people that won't maybe clearly understand what I'm trying to say today. But Lord, I pray, oh God, that as they read through the book of Galatians, they will understand that Paul I believe led by the Spirit, is trying to speak to the church and get them away from the things of the flesh, get them away from the things of the world, get them away from the things of the law, and get them into walking in the Spirit. 
Lord, I know you want us to walk in the Spirit. And you want us to be led by the Spirit. You want us to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. And most of all, you want to live out the Holy Spirit each day in our lives as we journey through here on this old earth. So I pray now that you will guide and direct us and use these words to strengthen us, to change direction, to make commitments to things that are going to make it possible that we are not walking in our strength and power, but we're walking in your strength and power. I pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit on everyone who listens tonight. And Lord, that we as a body of believers will make a commitment to you. Oh Lord, today we ask that you would help us to walk, help us to be led, help us to be full of your fruit. And most of all, Lord, help us to live every day under the power and the authority and the anointing of your spirit now. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, we say, amen. Thank you for joining us again tonight. And again, if you've got some free time in the morning that you want to join us in our Discipleship Empowerment Word as we're studying different words, come and join us at 8 o'clock, Manitoba time. We'd love to see you. We'd love to be with you. And Lord willing, we hope to see you next Sunday as we continue on the rest of our, another part of our journey when it comes to studying how Paul speaks to the Galatian church and how he's speaking to the church of Jesus Christ around the world, even today. God bless you. We love you. Keep on keeping on in Jesus. And we hope to see you again. Bye-bye now.